Yeah, g'day. I'm Ash Dowden, pretending to be Tim Thompson in, in one of Tim's lovely green shirts. Not doing it very well, but uh, I'm on Tala Station near Mount Magnet in Western Australia, and this Mack truck's the one that's been causing me all the grief over the past 12 or 18 months. Keeps throwing a fault code uh, due to an intermittent wiring or sender issue. There's actually nothing wrong with the truck. It's been tested out about four times. They can't find anything wrong with the truck, but it keeps throwing a fault and derating on me. And when it derates about the third time, it just derates right back to idle. So I can't very well drive anywhere at all. And I can be eight or nine hours away from the homestead sometimes. And uh, it's, it's almost impossible to uh, carry on like this. So uh, I've been lucky enough to be lent one of these Amcel 3400 diagnostic tools. And we're going to give this tool a try and see if it can help me by reading, resetting, and ultimately removing, erasing, or deleting those codes out of my truck. So we're going to give this a try and see if it's any good. <laughs> okay, so here we are in the Mac and uh, pulled up on the edge of the road and it's thrown a fault. So I've got a check engine and a little lightning bolt there and that's what happens when it throws a fault code. Little check engine's light gone off but the warning beeper and the little lightning bolt are still there. So now we have to work out how we're going to get the uh, 3400 to reset and remove the fault code. Here we go with the uh, Amcel 3400 diagnostic tool. Came in a post pack, didn't know what it was, so I opened the post pack and this is what I got inside. Now this is the diagnostic tool that I've been asked to uh, give a try and see if it's any good. Lovely little cardboard box. Not a very big thing. User's manual, probably the instructions, don't need that. What have we got here? Looks like the little screen. So that's the unit itself. Nice compact. Not a very big screen on it, but hopefully it's big enough. Wind's just blowing the box up onto the exhaust pipe and set fire to it. What else have we got? It's a nice little sponge inside the box here, which is um, good for packaging. It's uh, obviously keep it all safe when it's in transport. And here we have some cords. Nine pin and a six pin. We've got our nine pin. That one there, I think, is the one that's going to go in. And we've got the cap off the, di off the diagnostic port up here. So I'm going to plug that one into there. Shove that in. And voila! Look at that. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's got a pretty picture on it. Right, so we'll just pretend it's a heavy duty truck. We'll pretend it's a Mac, which it is. What's that say? This machine has not been activated yet. Because it's got a Volvo engine, I'll push Volvo. Notice this machine has not been activated yet. The product are not activated when they leave the factory. Connect the Wi Fi network to enter the setting and click activation. Well, we haven't got any Wi Fi out here. How are we going to do this if we've got no Wi Fi? Could try taking the unit back into the house but the unit has no additional power cords, so the only way it can get power is through the truck port. So unless I can shift the truck closer to where the Wi-Fi is, I'm pretty much buggered. Luckily, I've limped the truck around closer to the back of the house, where hopefully I've got Wi-Fi. Okay, so I've got no idea, and I've looked in the uh, instruction manual, and it still doesn't tell me how to get Wi-Fi. So go back to the home page. That's the home page. Oh, it's got a little Wi-Fi signal. So that's a good sign. All right, so we'll go forward. This machine has not been activated. So push OK. Push activation. Activation failed. Please check your network. 
the no, oh, we'll have to do a capitals. All right, um, about 10 minutes has taken us with no help at all from the instruction booklet. The instruction booklet really doesn't give you any information at all on how to connect with the Wi-Fi. This machine has not been activated yet. Push OK. Activation. All right, so we're in. Communication error. ECU no response. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the key on and start the truck. We've got all sorts of things going off at us, which is all right. Going to get air pressure up and hit start test. You've got the onboard diagnostics coming out with engine, EBS, VCU, TCU, INF, and GSE. There's no idea what any of them mean, but I push start scan. Okay, so engine I've got a five, EBS I've got one, VCU I've got one, TCU I've got four and INF I've got one and GSE is green I've got nothing so I'll hit vehicle report PPID 8 piston cooling oil pressure FM15 it's a current fault now that when I've been into the mechanic shop that's the one that's been a problem for a while and they've actually tested the oil pressure in the piston cooling oil pressure sender and it's either a faulty wire or a faulty sender but there's nothing wrong with the oil pressure this is something that's really quite interesting that we pulled up on the on the uh, diagnostic tool here is that the code or one of the codes that it's throwing is the piston cooling oil pressure now at idle it's currently got 37.5 psi oil pressure at idle and it does go up obviously when I rev it so that's well and truly plenty that's so that's that's why I'm saying that the oil pressure is not the problem it's something in the sender or something in an earth or something in a faulty wire or some description so there's actually nothing wrong with the um, the actual oil pressure so that's one of the faults that it keeps throwing so that was just an interesting fact that we could actually see this on this diagnostic tool okay so now we've established that we've got five faults on the engine. We've got a, lot, a whole series of faults thrown there. So some of it's um, gearbox, some of it's brakes, some of it's engine. There's all sorts of things there. But we're going to try and see if we can actually clear some of these faults. And I don't know how to do that, but we're going to have a go at clearing. One key, you raise. Let's do, see what that does. Done everything. But uh, the engine, we've still got three faults showing active on the engine. Let's we'll see what they are. I'm going to wait for it to come around again. Reagent consumption, the second fault code, going to come around again. PSID 42 interruption of dosing. So that's the add blue. That's also one of the main ones I've been having problems with, and that is functioning. Add blue is being used. They've tested it change the filter can't find anything wrong with the AdBlue system so that's obviously an intermittent fault as well but it does say interruption of dosing activity what the third one is is the oxygen sensor or the NOx sensor PSID 46 NRX monitoring failure and they replaced the NOx sensor when it went into the mechanics workshop the last time so all those three faults that it's throwing there, I don't know why they're uh, throwing them. Like I said, the mechanics had this truck for a month, and because the faulting was intermittent, they actually couldn't find anything wrong with it. We've had a bit of a play around, and we've still got the three active fault codes on the engine, or three showing codes, but they're all saying they're inactive. So on the right-hand column there, it shows that they're all inactive. So I'm going to go back a screen and I hit the erase fault code button. Ignition on, engine stopped. Ah, okay. Do you wish to continue? Okay. But they're all still there. I'm going to push erase fault code again. It says clear success. It's still showing three engine fault codes. So we're going to have to try a bit harder to see if we can clear these fault codes because if I can't clear them, 
they're inactive, so there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to clear them. But I'm uh, not sure that this machine is actually capable of doing that. Anyway, that's what we need to try and do. We're going to keep having another go. We shut the whole truck down, we shut the machine down, and we started again. And now we've cleared all the engine fault codes appear to be gone. The INF at one. I'm going to press one key erase, and now that's gone too. So we've got all green. So it appears as if we've been able to erase all the fault codes, which is what we were trying to achieve. So maybe we've had some luck. Well, we've just shut the truck down again, shut the machine down, and restarted the scan. And that's what we've come up with. We've got now four engine faults. We've got 20 VCU faults. More faults than we had before when we first started. So I don't know what's going on. But we shut the truck down, disconnected the machine, plugged it back in, started the truck up. Now we've got more faults than we had before. So I'm going to press the one key erase. Okay, so after shutting the truck down and restarting, We've now got four fault codes thrown, and all of them are active fault codes. We've got road speed abnormal. We actually stop cruise control status, accelerator pedal position, and reagent quality, unidentifiable error. It's just thrown another four codes, which are all nothing codes. And uh, yeah, I don't know. They're all active. So we're going to try and reset all those. What I'm going to try and do is start the truck and see what fake fault codes are throwing, showing on the dash, if I can work out how to do that. Get it air up again to stop it squealing. But in the meantime, now it's saying I've got no active faults on the engine on the, on the dash here. Saying no active faults. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the diagnostic tool back in again. I've still got the three engine fault codes the same. You've got the uh, reagent consumption, the inter interruption of the AdBlue dosing, and the NOx sensor, so which are the same. Three faults that won't erase. None of them are active, so it shouldn't be a problem. But the problem being is that next time it throws one of these codes, it derates me when it, and I can't clear the codes, I can reset them, I can read them, but I can't clear them. And that's where I need the, the actual diagnostic unit from Mac to be able to do that. I've been able to do everything that anyone else has been able to do, just not what I needed to do. And if I have to do that or want to do that, the truck's got to go back to Mac. Simple as that. Anyway, after all that, if you've got a horn like this, it just makes you want to use it. So this little Ansel 3400, it's an HD 3400 Pro, has been some use. It's probably going to stay in the truck and get bounced around under the seat. So it's got a pretty handy little box that it lives in. Setting it up was very relatively simple in as much as um, plug was only can go one way into this machine. We had, we found, pretty easily found the right one that goes into the truck. The fact that it allowed me to read the codes and it gave me some pretty good detail on what the codes were. It um, didn't just throw a number at me like it does on the dashboard of the truck. It just gives you a, a fault number or a code number. Um, this actually gave me a bit more information. It also allowed me to plug in real time and monitor what was happening within the truck. So it was actually telling me uh, live time uh, sensor reading so it allowed me to feel comfort i guess in knowing that the um oil pressure and all those sort of things are running right even though the sensor's reading that there's a fault the oil pressure's actually within its acceptable limits so they're really good things the setting up of it with the wi-fi was problematic in as much as if your truck is not in range of mobile phone or wi-fi coverage or anything like that then you're buggered and out here we have neither and um, the fact that I was able to move the truck closer to the house and get Wi-Fi allowed us to activate the machine. But 
what it really needs is an external power cord, another cord. Once it's been activated now, it should be fine, but on the initial time, that's a problem. It allows you to read the codes, it allows you to clear the codes, or reset the codes, I should say, but it still does not allow you to clear the codes. These three fault codes on the engine ECU that I just cannot clear, and they're all inactive. So because they're inactive, um, one would assume you can clear them, but they're reading inactive, but I can't clear those codes, and that's problematic into the future. Now, um, this little fella here is probably one of the worst user manuals I've ever read. It gives you very, very limited basic details. The screen pictures are not accurate of what actually shows up on the screen. Um, it's pretty much a waste of time. This actual machine didn't do what I wanted it to do, which was to be able to clear the codes. Uh, it allows me to read them and reset them, but it doesn't allow you to clear them. But it is handy for some other things, and I would, you know, I'd give it a pass mark. It, it appears to be a robust little unit, um, but all in all, it hasn't allowed us to achieve what we wanted it to achieve. If you like this kind of content and are interested in seeing more, you better hit the subscribe button because Tim wants me to tell you to do that, and he gets grumpy when I forget to say it. And also, give it a little thumb, thumbs up. Now, there's probably half a dozen people out there that think. Most of what I've said today has been absolute rubbish and they think that I've probably been 